Hi guys, it's Lars here. This is the day 23 update. Uh, things have been a little bit spotty at the moment. Uh, with the updates, I was basically asleep all day yesterday because I was up all day the night before working on some project work. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I kind of pretty much slept through day 22. Um, and obviously the day 21 update was a quick one in the morning where I had to go out for the day. Okay, today's video is going to be uh, setting up some of the electronics and the software for the polytunnel. Uh, it might not be too interesting for the people that are just interested in gardening or just interested in food self-sufficiency. But um, stick around for a bit, see what you think. If not, you know, I don't begrudge you for, for not watching. You know, there's a... Uh, I think I've probably got a, a range of fans, some of them who are interested in the technical aspects and some of them who are interested in the gardening aspects. So let's get on with the video. Let's go. So what we're going to do today is something that I've been talking about for probably about six months and driving it and people absolutely batty with it, uh, which is the time-lapse rig in the, um, in the polytunnel. If you check out the YouTube channel, I'll stick some links in the description, there's uh, a series of videos called time-lapse. Those were taken in 2012, I think, um, where I basically had a laptop in the polytunnel for a few weeks with uh, a webcam cable tied to the crop bars. And the laptop was running a basic Python script that used the screen, um, yeah, the screen command in Ubuntu, which is now like well depreciated, uh, which basically grabs a frame from the webcam and saves it to the hard drive. And then what I was doing was taking all of them, running them through FFmpeg, and uh, converting them all into a video. And then I was manually uploading them. So my kind of dream for dream system for this is basically a, a battery backup box with a Raspberry Pi in it two webcams and basically all I do is I stick it on the wall and as long as it's got power it's creating time-lapse videos and it would be fantastic if every week it renders the video into like a, uh, uh, it renders all the frames it's captured into a video and then uploads that to YouTube for me and then maybe at the end of the month it does a month one I don't know you know every year it does an entire year uh, so there's loads of it's basically that's what I want. I want to stick it in the poly tunnel. And I never want to look at it again. Um, and I've been, <laughs> I've been like talking about let's do this for months. And uh, so let's do this. Uh, what I've got is I've got a battery backup box with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, we're going to go through the rough idea of what the system's going to do. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about the overall architecture of the system to start with. This is our end goal, this isn't what we're going to be making in the next day or so. Um, we have a Raspberry Pi, which is a small embedded Linux computer. Uh, they've probably seen them on the TV, they seem to be very popular. Uh, that has uh, an, a type of Linux on it called Raspbian, which is stored on an SD card. Attached to that are the blue lines, the blue lines represent the USB connections. Uh, we have a USB hub which is powered, and we have a 40 gigabit hard drive. The 40 gigabit hard drive is an important part of this system because what we want to do is we need to be saving data or photos constantly while the thing's in operation. That causes us a problem because SD cards are not very reliable when it comes to powering them off while writing data. If the power goes out halfway through a write, it can scramble the section of memory that it was writing to. And gradually over time, or all in one go, depending on where it, where it corrupts, it will gradually corrupt all of the data on the SD card. Now I've had other projects with Raspberry Pis where I was data logging um, and one power cut killed the Pi. Just shredded the SD card. And so you have to start again. So we don't want to do that and because this thing needs to be sitting out there for months on end without me worrying about it, I've got a small hard drive. This thing costs uh, £10 so it's like an, it actually costs less than the SD card, would you believe it? So the 40 gigabit hard drive is what we're going to be storing all of our images and video on. And then the SD card is going to be write, it is going to be read only, and we're not going to ever write anything to that during operation. That's just going to store the program and the operating system. Everything else is connected to the Raspberry Pi through a USB hub. Uh, this is a powered hub uh, because the Raspberry Pi doesn't have very, it's not the Raspberry Pi can't provide much power for USB things. In fact, it can't actually provide enough power for the hard drive, which was an interesting thing I found during testing today. The first thing we got attached to the USB hub is a Wi-Fi adapter. The Wi-Fi adapter is a small USB device. It plugs in, it gives you Wi-Fi access, and that lets us get data on, uh, on and off of the Raspberry Pi remotely without me having to open up the box. 
and it will also be used when it uploads to YouTube. The second thing we have attached are two 720p webcams. These are probably going to be Microsoft Life cams. Um, I've got a couple of those hanging around. I've had good results in them in the past. Uh, they're fairly reliable, fairly robust. Um, they're not the cheapest webcams in the world, but they're not the most expensive either. So if they do get damaged, I'm not too bothered about it. One of them is going to be attached with a powered USB extender, and this is a little bit of an unknown in this project. I have used range extend USB range extenders in the past with webcams with mixed results. Sometimes you get a perfectly fine signal, other times you lose frames, and it, which in this case isn't a problem. Sometimes you get corruption on the video frames, which is, is a problem. You get like bar, bars going across. The USB extender with the webcam is going to get us 10 meters extra cable on the webcam, which means we can have another time-lapse camera in another position in the poly tunnel. It might not work, so that's something we're going to find out. Okay, so this is quite a complicated system. We're not going to have time to do all of this today or even this week. Gradually, this, I'm going to be adding to this system over the next few weeks, and I'm going to be doing a video for each one. What we're going to start off with is a basic system where we have a Raspberry Pi, the USB hard drive, and one webcam. Both of these are going to be attached directly to the USB hub in the, on the Raspberry Pi. The USB hard drive does require more power than the Raspberry Pi can provide. So to fix this we need a 12 volt to a 5 volt power supply built into the battery backup unit. I've not talked about the battery backup unit in this part because that's not something I want to set up right now. It is basically just a 12 volt supply which has a battery backup. It doesn't have a 5 volt supply which is why we need to add one. So what we're going to have is we're going to have the Pi, we're going to have a webcam, and we're going to have a hard drive. And this is our first prototype system, and this is going to give us the ability to check whether everything works. So what we're looking at here is an isometric view of the end of the polytunnel, and what I've marked in are where the two cameras are going to go. So the first camera, which is going to be on the prototype system, is above the door. Uh, it's going to face down over the tanks and over the uh, grow beds. So we're going to get a long view all the way down the polytunnel. The second webcam is facing is above the, the grow beds that we've been building and that's going to give us a grow bed focused view so it's going to look down onto the grow beds and we'll be able to see how the plants are going and any, any problems. Uh, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go through a basic startup procedure for the Raspberry Pi getting started basically. The first thing you need to do is go and download and burn an SD card image to an SD card. Uh, that is really well covered in the um, getting started guide on raspberrypi.org so I'll just leave a link for that, I'm not going to go through it because it's boring. So to put the SD card in the Pi, power it up with a USB connection. That's reasonably self-explanatory also in the quick start guide. The third step we want is to set up networking. Now, so that it will work nicely with the network that I have set up already, I want it to use the statically addressed IP, so I always know that it's going to be 192.168.1.50. That makes it really easy in future. So the first thing I had to do was connect the Raspberry Pi to the network. That then, using DHCP, gets an IP address from the router. I don't know what that IP address is, so I had to download and run the advanced IP scanner. I'll leave a link for that. That gives you the IP address for the Pi. We need it statically addressed so that I know the IP address, so what we need to do is change the interfaces file. Okay, so to set up networking we need to change a file on the Pi. This is stored in the etc directory, which is where all of the configuration settings in Linux happen. And what we want to do is you need to change the network etc networking interfaces file. Uh, you can use an editor of your choice, I've used Nano, um, and basically just change the uh, the Ethernet to uh, a static address, I'm just reading off the screen here, uh, with the address as 192.168.1.50, I know in the screenshot here I've got it 137, that's to talk to my laptop instead of the network in the office. Uh, you can set this to whatever you like as long as you know what it is. And then all the other settings for the networking stay the same. The fourth step in setting up the Pi to be ready to use is a pretty <laughs> Pretty simple one, but easily overlooked. Change the admin password. <laughs> the default admin password for a Raspberry Pi is uh, Raspberry, I think. Yeah, I can't remember it already. Uh, but someone who could remember it already would probably be able to just get into it if you put it on the internet. So, 
just a, a general good practice. And then change it to something you remember and it's easy to type. I find typing Raspberry quite difficult. And then the fifth step is to go and do cool stuff, which is what we're going to go and do now. Okay, so the first thing I did was set up the uh, SD cards to boot as read only. Now this is important, as I mentioned before, to stop it from getting corrupted if it's writing and there's a power cut at the same time. So I edited the FS tab file here and I added in uh, read only uh, or RO to both the file systems that were already present, which is the boot file system and the um, the root file system, which is just denoted by backslash. <laughs> So the file we're looking at here is fstab, and this is a configuration file which sets up how file systems are mounted on the on the on the Pi. We have two file systems all, uh, available already. One of them is slash boot, and one of them is just slash. And that is our boot file system and the root file system, which is where everything happens. There is also a slash proc file system, which is uh, slightly special, and I, I'm not really going to go into it here, but. You don't don't need to change anything with that. Okay, so now when you start the Raspberry Pi up, it's going to start with both of those file systems in a read-only mode. Now, what you can do is you can issue the command sudo mount minus o remount comma rw slash dev slash mmc blk zero p two space backslash, which is or is that a forward slash? I never know. Uh, which is a bit of a pain in the ass to type, type out, and you know, prone to mistakes. So the first thing I've done is set up two scripts. One of them is called edit mode, which we're looking at now, and one of them is called check mode, which we'll look at in a minute. Edit mode uh, is a bash script, and it's stored in uh, slash bin slash edit mode. Uh, by putting it in slash bin, it means we can run it as a command anywhere if we've set up permissions for that. So the first thing it does is echo switching SD to read-write mode, it then runs the command we just looked at, and then it's got this if statement, and it checks the dollar question mark variable, which is the, the execution status of the last command. Um, and if that is equal to zero, everything was great, it switched to read-write mode, and if, it wasn't, if it's not zero, that's an error code, something went wrong and we tell, uh, we tell me well, we tell the user, we tell me, that it went wrong. So now, from the command line, you can type in edit mode, and it will put the Raspberry Pi into edit mode. So the second script I wrote is uh, basically a way of checking what type, what mode it's in at the, at the current time. And I borrowed this offline, uh, off, uh, off a forum. I honestly can't remember where it was now. Uh, but what this does is it uses the touch command, which uh, basically creates an empty file, and it tries to create an empty file somewhere on the SD card, actually in the, the user's home directory. And it then tests the, um, the return value from this. And if it works okay, it then echoes SD is mounted in read-write mode, because it could write the file, and if it couldn't write the file, it then says SD is mounted in read-only mode. So these are two uh, useful little commands that I can use to when I when I want to, to write stuff to the SD card, I can just say edit mode and it goes. And if I want to find out what mode it's in, I can say check mode and it will tell me. Okay, so the next thing I did was plugged in the hard drive. And the first thing that happened was it powered off the Raspberry Pi. I think this was because the hard drive uses so much power to start up, it drops the voltage low enough and causes it to reset. Uh, not ideal but we do now know that we can't run the hard drive directly from the Pi. The power dropped, it did a restart, and it came back up, and the little blue LED on the front of the hard drive is flashing, all the LEDs on the Pi are flashing, I could SSH into the Raspberry Pi, I could talk to it, everything seemed to be working, but it couldn't talk to the hard drive. And so using the command sudo fdisk minus L, that lists all of the available disks that it's found. And as you can see in here, that it's it's got the MMC BLK0, P1 and P2, which are the two partitions on the SD card. They're fine. We're expecting that. Uh, what we don't have is anything saying that we have a hard drive. So the way I sorted this out was I wired in the power supply for the hard drive to my laptop, 
to the USB port on my laptop and the data connection to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi was also running off of the USB on my laptop, so they both share a common ground, so I wasn't too worried about doing this, although I wouldn't recommend doing it with like one on the PC, if you have one on the PC and one on the Pi and they're not connected in any way. Uh, so, after doing that and rebooting again, uh, we run sudo fdisk minus l again, and this time we've got two extra devices. And uh, these are listed down the bottom. We've got the Dev MMC BLK 0 P1 and P2, which is the SD card, and we had that before. But now we've also got this Dev SDA1 and Dev SDA5, and these are the hard drive. So we have two partitions on the hard drive. One of them is, uh, I, to be honest, I'm not sure what the, the first one is, SDA1. It doesn't really work, you can't talk to it. Um, if anyone knows, I would love to know. Dev SDA5 is a FAT32 partition which came with the hard drive. Um, I am denied about this for ages, about setting it up as an EXT3 partition, which is for Linux. Uh, FAT32 is a Windows partition, and it gives us some advantages in that we can like, talk to it to, with Windows fine, and some disadvantages in that some of the coolest stuff with the Linux file system doesn't work on FAT32, particularly linking between files. However, I don't think I'm going to do that, and if I do, it's a reasonably easy thing to, to reformat it in, uh, in FAT32. Uh, we're not going to store anything on here that we want to keep permanently. The idea of the, SD, of the hard drive is it's just reusable memory. Okay, so we can now detect the hard drive, and we need to set it up so that when the Raspberry Pi starts up, it automatically mounts that hard drive so that we can actually use it. Alright guys, this is turning into something that's much longer than I thought it would be, um, but I think we've covered a lot today, so uh, in this part we've looked at the overall plan for the time-lapse system and how it's going to fit into the poly tunnel and what it's going to give us. Uh, we've looked at a simplified near-term uh, prototype with just the one camera and the hard drive. We looked at my general process for setting up a Raspberry Pi. We looked at how to set up static IP addresses by modifying uh, the interfaces file. We looked at how to create useful bash scripts that run as commands. And finally we looked at how to configure fstab to load the SD card in read-only mode, which is important to avoid corruption. Okay, so in the next part we're going to look at how to mount the hard drive uh, automatically when the Raspberry Pi boots up. And we're going to take a quick look at how to capture images uh, from a, an attached USB webcam. Okay, thanks guys for watching. I know it's been a bit of a long one. Um, Hopefully it was interesting, hopefully it's uh, you've got some ideas um, for, for your own projects. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback, this is the first kind of technical uh, Raspberry Pi type tutorial I've done for the blog. Um, I've done other programming ones in the past with Unity, but this is like the first kind of big project I guess. So yeah, I'd be interested to hear what everyone thinks. Uh, sorry if it's been too technical for some people, uh, or it's not been technical enough for other people, I know there's probably a, a various mix. So yeah, I'll see you in the next part. Thanks very much, I'm Lars Islander, and this was day 33 of the Year of Food. So, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. When I first tested this, you plug in the hard drive and it turns the Raspberry Pi off because it draws too much power. So what we're going to have to do is, I've just realised that I've had music recording this entire time. Move, Lars. Well done.